Finally, welcome to the Reluctant Sisters podcast. I'm Sarah. <laughs> I'm Amy. We know who we are. Yeah. I'm Amy, and we are the Reluctant Sisters. Two and of them. Two, two out of the three. And we are on Ravelry. We have our Ravelry group. Yeah. And so come and join. I'm Sarah JG2 on Ravelry and Sarah Gotro on Instagram. And there are links to that in our Ravelry group. And I am Flower Babies 3 on all the medias. Yeah. So get to get to follow and get to get in. That would be fun. It's fun to <laughs> yeah, we need conversate. To get it. Yeah. Thank you to all the people that are entering the um, ongoing Reluctant Alongs. Um, Good job. I'd like to, we need to like get the, it, we need to get the group more. Active. Active. I guess I need to start maybe start more threads. And... Yeah, I'm not. Well, because I don't check Ravelry all the time. Well, like, I check it for, but I don't get on there and talk to people and comment on yeah, stuff. Yeah, we need to and... do that more because that, that makes it more fun, I think. Maybe we should just have, get a, like, chatty group going and just yeah, talking about just, something. Yeah, start a topic. But that being said, the... Well, welcome to new viewers yes. and returning viewers. Thank you very much for coming back. Um, our Ho November... What? Hopefully we can get a little more... <laughs> on schedule. Yeah, on schedule, like we want to. We've just had... You were sick when we wanted to do it, and then the weather's been crazy. Like, last week, I had to use my snowblower twice, and today it's in the 50s. I think Portland has more snow than we do. Yes. Like, we hardly have any on the ground, and they're covered. The Naughty Nitwits definitely have awesome snow going Which on. I wish we had... I don't know. I don't like to... Having a snowblower does not make snow removal easy <laughs> especially for me and if anybody follows me on instagram i'm private but if i see that you have some kind of knitting info if you are private and you request me but you have like knitting info in your little well blurb, i usually i generally see who follows them or yeah it says followed by so and so and yeah so if i notice somebody that follows me that follows them then yeah because i don't like I but don't want i'm public so but if you follow me you'll see that like I, what did i post Oh, I posted some, um, oh, my trek to the mailbox. And that was from my front porch. And you can't see the street. It's just around that corner, though. But, yeah, it's long. So I wish that the snow we did have, would like, it was cold enough that it wouldn't melt. Because I like that look. But I don't want more snow we that I have nice, to remove. Yeah, the last, it was nice and fluffy. But yeah. It was nice and fluffy. But now it's gone. But, yeah. It's all gone. <laughs> I like a more consistent, like, this weather... My Sybil thing is like the temperatures. Yeah, I'm I, I guess nauseous. I just wish it would just stay cold enough for the snow to stay, but I don't want new snow that I have to keep. Oh, no, we don't need new snow. No new snow. Anyway, so but that being said, our um, reluctant along for November December had a lot of entries. Yeah, so we're gonna thank you all. Give away two prizes. Two prizes. Um, the first one who gave this to us? I can't remember. They sent it to you. Oh, uh, Tina. <laughs> Tina. Tina. Yes. Thank you very much. We <laughs> love it. They're beautiful. I know they can be a lot of work. And they're, she's very nice construction and, and stitching. And it's huge. Like, it's really very nice. I don't know. Sometimes they don't look as big, but here's a 100 gram ball of yarn. And yeah. You could probably fit a fingering wheat sweater in here. I would think. Oh, absolutely. And I love her little tag. I need to learn yeah, it's like box. how to do this with ease. It doesn't look difficult, but I end up mucking it up for however. Um, yeah, it's got a nice, so, nice little zippy ball. And... Yeah, it's beautiful. And then I found I have two had two of these left. So it's just a row counter. I'm going to order more because I like putting these in the prizes. Yeah. So nice little yeah, happens to match. So that's one prize. And then since we had so many, we had 87 entries. So thank you. Because, um, I don't know, well, new people or others might not realize that, um, and I even asked about this and everybody's, well, two people, everybody said they liked it. Um, if you meet the little, like, criteria of the month, you can enter your picture. It can be the same picture, just enter it twice, that way you have two entries. Um, last month, it was, I think it went back to anything you were reluctant to make. Yeah. So anything is eligible, anything at all, even whips, um, and if you meet the criteria of the two month drawing or the two month knit along time frame, um, you can enter that twice. So last month it was anything you were reluctant to make. Um, this month we'll talk about more in a second, but it's shawls or blankets. 
But, um, and since we had so many entries, um, I'm going to do this, um, add this to the, another prize on um, the Regia design line, Arnie and Carlos. I bought this um, a few months ago when my local yarn store closed and it, is, it was on sale. And, like, it wasn't really my favorite colors, but I had to get it. It was on sale. <laughs> but I knew I'd use it for a prize or something. And so here's my other row counter. Okay. I need to order more. So, so we had 87. So I'm going to do two numbers between 2 and 87. Siri, oh, where'd you go? Siri, give me two numbers between 2 and 87. Let me check that. Here's some information. Some information on the numbers I asked for. 60 and 41. So we got... Yeah, that would be the last one, I think. What? Never mind. Oh, so 60 is... <laughs> Mona N. Yay! Socks for my husband, Mona. Oh, those are cute. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Oh. Mona enters a lot. Thank you, Mona. Mona from Norway. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, fancy. So you're going to get this prize. That's the bag. Um, please message me, Flower Babies Three, with your in, uh, real life. address, with your real life <laughs> location, and I will send that to you. And what was the other one? Forty one. Yes. Okay. It was forty one. Um, so you had to go to page three. No, I'm on page three. Oh, two. We had a lot. Yeah. Tell me what to do. I know where I am. Forty-one is Knitting Mary B, who made the second sock head hat. Yay! That's cute. And that I'm assuming your name is Mary, but Mary in Wisconsin. Yay! Yay. So once again, message me, Flower Babies Three, on Ravelry with your stuff, You're and it. we will get that up to you as soon as we can. Okay. Oh, and if anyone out there would like to donate a prize of oh, any yes. kind for any of our um, cows, get in contact with one of us. We'd love to do that. Um, Lovely. Oh, and we're starting the Rhinebeck along again because we really want to go to Rhinebeck. Hopefully <laughs> we won't have a family emergency again. And we'll make it this year. <gasps> Come um, hell or high water, yeah. we'll make it this so year. So that... Cal, I have a um, chatter thread um, for that already, too, um, is make an adult sweater. You don't have to be going to Rhinebeck. Yeah, you don't have to go to Rhinebeck. Um, it's just called, you know, everybody's probably heard that you knit a sweater and you call it your Rhinebeck sweater when you're going to Rhinebeck. So um, any adult sweater, you don't have to be going to Rhinebeck at all. Um, it, the, so should we have it? Yeah, start it after January 1st. Yeah, um, it can be a poncho, it can be a vest. I think yeah. that a vest would be fine, any kind of sweater-like item. So January, between January 1st and October 31st, a two-sweater maximum because Rhinebeck is a two-day event. And one of the prizes, if we'll do more than one prize drawing if we get a lot of entries, but one of the, at least one of the prizes will be from Rhinebeck. And if for some reason we can't make it again, we'll just order like I did um, from a vendor. From that a vendor that was that rang back. Um, all right. I guess good. that's all the cow info. Whew. We made it through that one. Okay. okay. So we start with FOs. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's where she put it last time. Um, oh, you you go. I don't watch, so I don't know. Go ahead. I just I just said I'll come to talk. Okay. Sure? Oh, yeah. I'll just yeah. I'll start. I'll start with the FO that That's not here because my husband took it. Um, I made him a fornicating deer hat. <laughs> um, he he wanted one, and we were talking about silly silly patterns on Ravelry that like are some a little interesting. like inappropriate for you. Kind of look at it and go the adult patterns. What is that? So oh. I was saying, I was showing one that was kind of. Two adults for knitting. And I said, oh, Tony, you're going to love this deer hat. I knew that. And so it's just the chart. You can put oh, it on yeah. socks. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because the hat that I, the hat pattern I used is, is linked in her um, chart. And it was for the, um, we, 
be a pirate's hat or something like that. Anyway. Um, and of course, when he's, when I showed it to him, when he, he saw wanted it, he it right away. Um, I used a, well, I'll show the picture first and then I'll talk about the yarn. Yeah, it's just the chart. So that is the hat. <laughs> and when you make it, depending on how many stitches you use, obviously, this oh, one came out with four. And it's a free chart. Oh, yes. look it. I blocked mine. So I blocked mine because some of these R-rated pa patterns are like a little too much. So I, you can block them. So I can't even see them. Isn't that funny? So um, but it's by Anne Rutten. <clears throat> Just go look in the um, project page anytime. That's what one of the first things <laughs> I do. Um, you go into the projects tab on a pattern. I and just see what other people did because I use that a lot with um, sweaters or anything in my size to know how much people really used in yardage mm -hmm. or if there is any kind of um, consensus that something's messed up, like not messed up, but oh, the sleeves are really tight. So I did this, I did less decreases, I cast on more. This is kind of short, it's kind of tight over here. I look to see if there's any alterations that were done by a lot of people. And the top of the hat chart was kind of confusing for me and some people will do different um, patterns for the top of their hat so you can kind of get a, a different, I ended up doing stripes almost like a bullseye on the top and a pom-pom but um, I use this yarn, his, uh, my husband's friend went to Turkey and she, she asked what he wanted from Turkey and he said something knitting related. <laughs> so she found yarn, and it's very wooly. I I want to say it's from somewhere else, though. It's not Turkish yarn. Oh, I can't it was, like, from Slovakia or something like that. But anyway, I yeah, very scratchy. wound a bunch. Of, yeah, it's very, very wooly. It's good for, like, mittens or slippers, yeah. I think. It's very wooly. But um, when I, I put conditioner in it when I blocked it for him so that it wasn't so scratchy. But I bound, yeah, I bound off a bunch and dyed it red so that it went together instead of trying to find oh, yarn to go that's good with idea. it you know because I was like I knew I had plenty for the hat yeah so that's the first one and then um, this is my drizzle hat the patterns by Charlotte Bory from the Charlotte and Gus podcast I know I will I use like a beanie right? yeah but I use it fits me but it fits the kids better um, because I used it, the weight is more of a sport. Oh, um, a sport it's weight. a lighter yarn than the yeah, pattern. Yeah, I think the pattern calls for DK. But anyway, she's from the Charlotte and Gus podcast, and she's in Paris. And she makes a lot of really cool patterns. And she asked me to test knit this for her. Drizzle hat. It's brioche. And it's pretty simple. Like, if you... First, if you know brioche stitch, anyway, you'll whip it out. But um, there's only excuse me, one type of increase and one type of decrease in the whole hat. Oh. So with two color brioche. So it comes out, but it comes out really cool. You can see how the pattern changes. The colors are inside each other and then they're outside each other. You know, it's yeah. pretty neat. So it's a cute little hat pattern. So look it up because it's fun. Um, I used, oh yeah, Rowan. Pure wool. Pure wool? Mm -hmm. um, four ply, mm -hmm. the green and this weird tanny color. They didn't have colors, so it's like four, two, one, and three, eight, or something. Um, and then should I just talk about the dye finish now? Yeah. Okay, that can be in my FO. Okay, yeah. and then yeah, we'll talk plenty about that. And then I dyed up some yarn with a friend the other day. She wanted to learn how to dye a little bit, so she came over, and I didn't really need to dye any yarn, but I did. I used some pink and some green. I'm not sure if I can call it that because it's trademarked, but I'm calling it Wedding on Sesame Street because I think it's funny. You okay. know, Sesame Street trademark. Oh, I didn't know if I could call it that, but that's what I think of when I look at this is Kermit and Miss Piggy and they oh, get married okay. <laughs> and everybody's there. So Yeah, I was like, where'd that come from? That makes sense. It makes so. a little more sense now. Um, the green broke up a little bit. I used a bit of a swampy green, so there's some yellows, and I threw some purple in there, but it mixed. And you got some, you got the green and white. Yeah, yeah. So Ooh. it came out pretty neat. I like everything I do is pretty much an experiment. <laughs> if I have a specific thing in mind, I try to do it. But other than that, just kind of drop it in the pot and see what happens. 
Um, that's it. It hasn't been a month. It's been a little while. I've got like a lot. I felt like I didn't have a lot, and then I was like, oh, well, you do. Um, this I finally finished. Uh, it had been sitting, and then I think I finished it in a little over a week with the sleeves. I was done, and I just needed to do the sleeves, I think. Oh, so it's a bottom. This is the Freya, F R E Y J A, I think. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It is um, it's an Icelandic sweater. Um, it's knit from the bottom up in the round, and then you steak it, which is cutting it up the middle for to make it a cardigan. That's scary. Yeah, it's kind of neat. It, it, wasn't as scary as I thought it'd be because I guess the tutorials I watched on YouTube and I have a craftsy class um, for a different sweater that speaks and um, it was okay. Cause you, um, I use the crochet method. I crocheted up each side before I cut it. So, and this um, wool is very sticky. So, or grabby, not like tacky, sticky, <laughs> it's grabby. It grabs onto itself. So it, um, it worked fine. Um, so I, when I started the sweater, picked it back up, I was like halfway with the sleeves, I think. And so, um, I knit the sleeves and then you join it in the yoke and I did the color work. Um, this is made out of, um, I think it's blue lot. Um, <laughs> and I didn't bring the yarn with me. Um, it's the unspun Icelandic yarn. I did a swap, um, and Inga Rose from the Knitting Diaries podcast um, sent me some. It's really inexpensive. Um, so I asked her to pick the colors for me, and she did. Oh, there it is. Let me just say what, what it's called. Istex Platulopi. It's unspun Icelandic. So you, can, you get it, and it comes in like a plate. I think they call it a plate, and it's just a round circle. And, um, <laughs> you just knit Not it those rectangular guys. it pulls apart really easy but I didn't have it pull apart while I was knitting it well I the only time I did is when the dog would jump up and of course she'd jump on it and then it'd pull it apart I think that's why I put it down because the dog was making me crazy jumping on my yarn and but if it pulls apart you just put it back together and rub it and it sticks to itself and the it's got the um Icelandic sheep are dual coated, so they have a long thread fiber hair. They have long hair and they have short hair. So the long is so long that once it, it's even longer than this. I think I even broke that. As you knit it, it gets fiber locked. It's not going to. And I really, um, the sleeves felt a little tight and I blocked them like really aggressively like this. And it doesn't, you don't get a hole in the sweater when you do that. Um, I kind of feel like I'm butchering this. Anyway, <laughs> I like it. It fits nice. Um, I used some ribbon to cover the cut edges. And then I think I crocheted up the side and around. I didn't put any, um, on the cuff because I wanted to be able to, like, push up the sleeves if I wanted to. And I felt like if I put... Um, a crocheted edge around it, it wouldn't stretch enough. So here, that's enough about that. I think I've gone on enough about it. Um, I've done a ton of spinning. I don't know what my deal is, but a ton. So um, the first one I'll talk about is a braid of Marine 8020 Merino Tencel, and I think the Tencel is black. It's called Voices in My Mind from Three Waters Farm. It's my first um, purchase from them, and it's lovely. Um, I haven't checked my yardage. This, I think this might be a fingering weight or maybe heavy fingering weight. I didn't check my yardage or do um, a wraps per inch. Sorry, I'm not a podcaster. It's called procrastination, folks. Um, this, I did a traditional three-ply because I wanted a lot of barber pulling. And it worked. It worked pretty good. And then I only had a little bit, tiny bit left, um, that I just chain plied off the bottom to get rid of the rest of it. But um, this is for a friend, 
And I love the color so much that I bought two braids. Because there's nothing like buying something that you love for a gift for somebody else. And then you don't want to give it away. So I have a braid of that for myself. Um, I think I might put that in my Find Your Fade that I want to knit out of hand spun because there's so many. It's got purple, green, it's got a little bit of um, a gold. Not blue. Um, the purple's like a t and a teal. Yeah, and, and the tensile, I don't think you can see it as much. I think it blended together, but it was black. But even with um, having all those um, different braids and different thicknesses, I still have um, quite a few sections that but where the color all matched up and I thought that was pretty cool. But even though I tried to do all that, it still had sections that matched up. So that's that one. Um, this one is from Hobbledy Hoy. See, so I could use this next to that color in a Find Your Fade if I wanted to. This is um, from Hobbledy Hoy. I bought it at um, Madison Wool which is local to our other sister, Adrienne. It's the Magical Realism Batlings. Um, they come like this, see these little puffs of fiber. It's um, hand dyed, super fine, super wash, merino wool and silk. I didn't check my wraps cringe with this either, but it came out really good. And very drapey because of that silk, obviously. Then I did where's my other bag? From Classy Squid Fiber Company. It's her champagne bat. I don't she might have more of these. They're limited edition. She's been doing um drinks. I don't know if it was like holiday drinks or what she called it, but this one was champagne. She's done like Mexican hot chocolate and stuff. Um this was a two-ounce bat. It is California red, was which is a sheep breed. Um, has organic polworth, mugga silk, which is um, a naturally gold silk, um, Comer silk noil, and Angelina. It's undyed. So that was two ounces mm -hmm. of that. That looks like about a fingering too. Yeah. But it was interesting. Um, even though it has the two sh two wools in it, I could tell the difference. I could tell when I was in a section that was more. The California red. It's, it's not as um, spongy and squishy as the Paul wore. And let's see. There's more, unbelievably. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, um, was a club colorway from Highland Handmaids. Um, her club opened back up. Um, so go to, what is it? Highlandhandmaids.com back forward slash shop. Um, she's got a two different fiber club options, two sock weight options, and a worsted weight option. And I, I think the prices are reasonable, and you don't have to pay for the whole year at once. You can get month to month, um, which is nice. Highland Handmaids, it's called Under Lock and Key. It was a um, mixed BFL, so it was um, brown BFL and the white BFL mixed together and then dyed. Um, I didn't, I just finished this. I washed it last night, so it might be a tiny bit damp still. But see, this color would even go into my fade too, because it matches mm -hmm. the colors in this. So, I didn't, like I said, I just pulled this off the hanger this morning. And then this is another one from the club. This is the December, no, November club from Highland Handmaids, November last year. Um, Wensleydale in the Hello colorway. And that's this. So I haven't even counted what my yardage yet on this. Um, these were both two ply. I ply it all into one bobbin and then wind it into a cake and then ply the two ends together. Yeah, and so um, you'll see the, how different because Wensleydale is a long wool and it kind of felt like Barbie hair. It's not like wool, the stereotypical wool that I think of. Not like, you know, squishy like this. It's long hair <laughs> and shiny. But you can see how they're different. I'll hold them up together. Um, the BFL bounced up. And this is the 
So I definitely need to, these obviously aren't going to be the same yardage if I counted them right now, even though I use the same Nitty Knotty. This one just bounced right up and this one stays in. And this one has, has a halo. I don't, this was not my favorite to spin. Not the dyer's fault at all. It's just the, the wool is weird. It's just not what I'm used to. And I don't know if I'll keep it or give it away. Or... <laughs> Amy's always ready, willing, and able to take whatever I'll I take don't it. like. Oh, and last but not least, with, oh my gosh, babies. Everybody is having a baby. Everybody had a baby. Everybody's going to have a baby. It's like baby explosion between podcasters and friends on Instagram and friends in real life. And so for one of those babies, I knit, what is this called? Is it just butterfly? I didn't even look it up. It's from the Made. Fauna, Made Magazine. Is it Making? No, Making. Making oh, Magazine. Making magazine. Um, it's um, a butterfly and a cocoon. It's by um, Susan B. Anderson. So I think the pattern, you can only get it in that making magazine right now. But I think like in six months, it reverts back to um, Susan B. Anderson. You can buy it as a Ravelry download. You don't have to buy the whole magazine. So look. I'm going to redo these eyes up right now. I think it looks like that weird guy from Goonies with the big head, with the little eyes. I'm going to redo them. But it's, she knit it from, or she designed it bottom up, and then you do some striping, and then you go ahead, and she tells you right where to put the eyes. I don't like where mine are, but I got the plastic safety eyes for my nieces. But yeah, it's all seamless, all picked up. She tells you how to do these little eye cord antenna. I like that. Yeah, they're really, any toy, toys aren't my favorite thing to knit. They're kind of fiddly, but they're worth it sometimes. And if I make, I have three, Amy has three girls, so I can't just make one. I'm going to have to make three at least. So, yeah, this is a little cocoon. It's just all scraps. That is all my FOs, and that is enough. That's why we need to podcast more often. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going to whips. Okie dokie. Well, first I decided after that um, crazy color work hat that hurt my hands, <laughs> I just needed something really simple to go around and around with, and I have, excuse me, um, anyway, Mercury socks, everybody's making Mercury you socks, want me to look at, you talk about them, I'll look at them, unsubscribe, um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm doing them tandem, 72 stitches on size zero, I'm using my carbons, and I'm using Patton's Croy socks in the brown rose marl colorway, and that's how they're coming. I use a little bit of my first reg regia. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the toes and the heels, but I'm doing them bottom up because all you have to do is reverse the pattern. It's free pattern. And that's what I've got going. And it's a pretty cool thing because it's a five row repeat. So I just have to count four repeats and I know I did 20 rows. And so I can go back and forth. I know how many I did. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to count your stitches. Oh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Yeah. By Kim Drotar. D-R-O-T-A-R. Oh, we're bad podcasters and we don't do show notes. So if there's anything that you can't find that we've talked about, just I'm going to try. Put a but message. Uh, I don't like doing it. It doesn't happen. Okay. But if there's anything that you can't find that we've talked about, just put it in not. put it in the episode thread on Ravelry and think. We'll get right back to you. And then, so that's that. Those are cute. I like the way this. They're cuffed down socks, but you can, it's, when it's yeah. not really an obvious directional pattern, you can just do the same pattern for toe up. And I just flipped it. Yeah. I just oh. oh, you flip it. Yeah. But anyway, um, and then I'm doing a facial. Ooh. Is this the chilling? This is the chilling next. And, yeah. um, which side? This way. Um, this is my fade I, over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with, I dyed this yarn. It's a really cool reds and blues and whatever. That and first color only uses like 20 grams. Yeah. Or something, so it, it's 
So I could totally use the other part of this game for some socks or something. Um, and then I went into um, some Rowan fine art because I had some of this left over. Um, it was the birch elm. It's either elm or birch colorway. <laughs> it's pretty cool because it's one of those. They're one of the yarns that it's the number on there oh, but yeah. if you type it into Ravelry it comes up with a name so and then this is my Hey J yarn in the Texas colorway they were nice enough I won that I think they should call it lobster because it looks like lobster meat no, it does kind of. <laughs> um, when I was caking it up I was like this looks like when you break open a lobster um, then I have some of um, the pink it oh, right here the pink is nitpicks Nitpick Stroll Tonal, and it, this is the, uh, kind of looks like dog wool, but no, what is that name? Because I picked the cucumbers, the green, yeah. and this, it doesn't matter, it's pink, pink tonal. And then I dyed this one, it looks like a garden, it's got purples in it, and I've gotten to the lace section on the Chili Knits. This is Chili Knits. Is this your next to last color? Yeah. It's her um, Nimbus Fingering, which is 801010 Merino Cashmere Nylon. Um, it's This is in the aquatic. Who did you win that from? I got this in a swap from oh. uh, my Crafty Toads ladies. Nice. My Crafty Toads ladies. This is looking way lighter. Blue. It's, it's, it's a, more, more of a green. Tealy. Yeah. So, um, like an ocean green, but she is, uh, Connie Chili Knits on, um, Connie Knits on Instagram, but her name is Chili Knits. And she has a podcast too. Yeah. She's, she's pretty cool. Is she in Argentina? I think she's in Chile too. Oh, Chile. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's in South America. If I'm leaving all this Chile. crazy fiddling I'm doing with my bags, I'm putting that in. So, um. Good grief. That, this is why I don't watch the podcast. It's Chile in Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chile spell, could be another spell first name. and last, please. Mm. Um, so oh. I'm doing these on um, some Chow Goo. We not, might not be exciting, but we're funny. You can laugh at us. Why is this not working? Oh, there they are. They're 3.5 millimeter size four Chow Goo needles. And I, I like I'm at the biggest part, and they fit on there pretty good. So you don't really need a ridiculously long. Because that's not a forty inch. No, it's supposed no. to be thirty two. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you can. I I really like this pattern. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you can just scrap it up. Oh, this will be my last color. I dyed that up too. It's got reds and blues and green. The colors kind of split off a bit into into teals and stuff like that. So. And even if you don't have seven colors like the pattern recommends, mm -hmm. um, you can use ten. You can, yeah. You, you can, can use three. Um, she just suggests that you do your color change in the garter. In the garter part, like do the color change like you do the color change. You know, the color change in the pattern. Yeah, and, oh, and you'll see mine. I have one that I have. And even if I you want to colors. throw in extra stripes and stuff, I just love the way. Yeah, you can do whatever you, you want. think you look at colors that you've got and you're like, I don't know how this is going to look together. And then they go into each other and you're like, Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Yeah. So, and twist the Hank and lay them all up together. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And I think that's it for me. I know I have some other whips probably, but no. Anything. I mean, just those are the ones you're active. Yeah. On. Those are the ones I'm active on right now, especially after doing, I kind of put everything away until I did that hat. Mm, I know. I've been right like here. It was like, shawl. I couldn't, I was untwisting thing. I was like, oh, <laughs> so um, my first whip. I'm almost done. This could have been an FO. I just have to do um, the border in the crochet thread. Because look, I played yarn chicken and won. Look, that's it. That was it. Anyway, I'll show you. This is crocheted, which I don't do very often, but I love this pattern. Um, it's crochet baby set you can find it on Ravelry I didn't even think to look on Ravelry and then seductive fairy on Instagram said what is that and I looked for it and of course it's not there because it's Ravelry everything's on Ravelry um and it's a free pattern and it's this there's two versions 
for some reason, um, this one's from 1950. I think there's one from 1948, but the only difference is the booties are different. I don't usually do the booties, but it's um, crochet. This is hand spun. Um, it's superwash merino bamboo. I think it's a nylon maybe. So it was white with hits of um, blue and purple. This is, I'm a little bummed. I think it's kind of big. It's not newborn size, but mom, mom likes it. Mom says it's fine. Oh, it's okay. right. Yeah. And for any baby born within the next few months, this will probably fit for like fall. So it's, it won't be too warm. But um, yeah, it's just crocheted. You start at the top and you increase. You'll see how the chevrons are getting bigger. And it's soft. So um, I just have to seam the bottom sleeves and go around um, the whole thing with um, crochet cotton. I've done it where I've just used the same yarn, but I'd, obviously I don't have any yarn. <laughs> um, but you just kind of make eyelets around the top and you tie it with a ribbon. It's just tied with a ribbon. Oh, and speaking of Seductive Berry, I, what is her last name? Tanya? What's your name, Seductive Berry? Seductive Berry had a baby. The day, Congratulations. remember I was talking to you about her? Oh yeah, because she posted a picture. Look how, it's only been a few days and look how my belly looks different. Okay. And and I was showing them because it really, it was like, whoa. Yeah, well, three days later or the day after, I think it was the day after she posted that picture. My belly looks so different. Has a baby. So congratulations. She's very beautiful. I don't know why. Maria. Congratulations <laughs> on your beautiful baby. Oh. She said that her grandmother knits or crochets this a sweater that looks like this for all the babies. So that's that. And this is for an upcoming baby. And I think I'll give them this. <laughs> and what am I working on? Oh, if anybody is working on the, what is it, Cozy Schlanket Mystery Knit Along by Mina Phillip who is famous. Now she's in New York. She's another one having a baby. She's doing an MCAL and there has been um, two, not clue. Yeah. Yeah. Did it's they call clue. it a clue? Two clues released so far. So this is mine. Um, my three colors. I think, I think uh, Evelyn, Amy's Evelyn is going to end up with this because this is totally her colors. Oh, that's super wash. Okay, the pink is just um, Cascade 220 non super wash heathers. Colorway is 9601. So it's just this light pink that I got from my local yarn store before they close. Shell. The pink for the nitpick. <laughs> Shell. <laughs> This is just Cascade 220 <laughs> in black, obviously. It's superwash. And then this is um, yarn, superwash merino. I got from Frost Yarn. She's Frost Yarn on Instagram, and I think she's Nicole83 on Etsy. But she's Frost Yarn on Instagram, and she has a link to her shop. She has started dyeing a lot more. She um, makes these incredible they're out like incredible nebula inspired she'll do anything but these bats and they're enormous like instead of the app i feel like a lot of people sell like a two ounce bat and you can find more but she hers are always like four ounces or more but anyway frost yarn i bought this a while ago she did a um, collaboration with orange jellyfish dreams a little while ago and they did a bunch of yarns this is actually like, what is it, do they call it reactive? Black light reactive? Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's really, I think this might have been a nebula inspired, inspired too. I can't remember. But anyway, that's what this is. So these are the two clues. And now it's going back to that, um, just the solid pink or the heathered pink. This is my find your tape. That's the next. I think I'm in the same spot as you. I think so too. Um, but this is um, yarn I dyed um, my, myself. 
And um, this was from the Cloud Lover yarn. So it, they come in 50, I think it's, no, Cloud Born. Where did it go? All oh, right here. So this is, this was a 50 gram hank, like, a, so half a hank. And that's how much I have left of half. Next color. My next color is a, was a skein. See, I'm, I'm, if I think if I, I wouldn't even have to, but I'm going to do heels and toes in that purple yarn I have left. And do socks. Mm -hmm. um, this is spun right round, and she had a. I think it was be after Christmas, before Christmas. Um, she had. I guess she's might be going over to a um, website. Um, but this color is take a dip, and if you watch this podcast at all, you'll know that it's totally my colors. Take a dip. It's her 80-20 uh, Super Rush Merino Nylon, 400 yards, 200 grams. And you can see the types of like the neon green and the purple and the dog hair. From my, It didn't come with the dog hair. I added that myself. All right. And then my next color here. Do you want to like cover? My next color is Lolo Vidic. Yep. Like I said, I bought these and then they all came in the mail at the same time. Lolo did it in the Dowager Countess colorway. Tupin Abbey inspired. I wish it could be on forever and ever and ever. This is 7525 Merino Nylon, 463 yards to 100 grams. Um, that. Okay. <laughs> so okay put it on the counter Lolo did it I'm gonna do what oh what I was saying um I'm gonna do hot pink I think heels and toes get a sock so that I love it yeah. she's gonna steal my nose color I want I want everything this is fun oh. so joy Sharon Squires Jensen is her Instagram name um she's a fun feed she does all kinds of stuff um She's got quite a variety of, that she posts pictures on on her Instagram. She has 1,500 followers. Um, anyway, she did a giveaway, I think, when she hit 1,000 followers. I can't remember, but I won. And it was a skein of Dream and Color. No, yeah, Dream and Color yarn. Um, the Smushy Base, Dream and Color Smushy. It's called Walking the Gangplank. Um, it says exclusively dyed for the loopy U, 100% superwash merino, four ounces, 450 yards. So it's really squishy and round, and it, it's uh, very tonal. So I use that after my Dowager Cadmus, and I was really like, I'm knitting it, and I'm like, I don't know if it goes, but usually when it's like that, once everything else is around it, it it goes. You know, it it matches fine. Or it doesn't seem out of place. Did I use up? Oh, I think I used up. So my next color, I didn't have enough of this. Um, this is the Tosh Merino. Is it called Twist Light? Yeah, it's the um, plied yarn, not the single. Like Tosh Merino Light is the single. Um, this is the filtered light colorway, and it has the blue in it. But I didn't have enough. I only had like half as much as I needed. So then I found found or I remembered I had this um, from when I did a pair of socks for our brother, their Iron Man socks. So these were the heels and toes. Um, I think this is the turmeric colorway. It's the um, Nitpicks Capretta in, yeah, it's an MCN. So um, it's a little fuzzier than the other yarns, but I think it works good, which leads us to the best parts. I want everything made out of this colorway. All the things and all the things. This is Stranded Dye Works in the Oasis base and the Industrial Kingfisher colorway. It's very, very popular. I think a lot of everybody's into those gold color. It's gorgeous. And I messaged her and I said, um, because it's hand dyed, they're all a little different. I said, can I have the, if you have a skein that has um, a lot of teal in it, I'm, you know, I'd like that because that's my favorite part. And so she said, you know, absolutely no big deal. 
It's already died. <laughs> just pick the skein that's got more. So I just started the lace, or I'm on the second repeat of the lace section. Um, and so my last color will be, um, this is Copper Corgi in the Inkwell colorway. I think it's Copper Corgi. I don't know if I have this game for thing anymore. Um, I did a test knit for Emily of the Fiber Town podcast. She sent me the yarn, which was nice. I've never had that happen before. But um, I had this left over, and it really matches well with the dark speckles. That's an excellent podcast too. I feel like it's even snowing, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but people come back, so they must not mind too much. <laughs> this is my cool. last like active whip. These are my are these purple? These are hand spun socks for our great aunt because if you have a great aunt, she probably deserves hand knit socks. Rock pool socks. This is, um, I think it's from Vanilla Part 2 from Mina Phillip, Knitting Expat. Mina Phillip Designs. She did um, two, she has a, she did two floor pattern collections. And they're all, you know, easy. I think this is from the part two. Did I say uh, rock pool? <laughs> no, this is not rock pool. This is meadow. I'm doing another pair from her. She does have a rock pool, but these aren't it. So I'm past the heel. I'm doing top down on on these are knit pro zings, which if you're in the states, you can get them from the woolly thistle. So you um, which is nice. She has a lot of or all UK yarn, but it's, you know, she imports it already, so you don't have that international shipping charge. So that's nice. Um, you can see it's a little bit of texture. And this is, uh, um, I think this is another one. This, well, I know it's another one from Highland Handmaid's Club. Um, I did a chain ply. So it's three ply, but not from three to four. Yeah, so I can't, I don't know where I put the measurement of her foot, so I'll have to call my cousin or to find out. Mm. What size is your mom's foot? So I don't end up with socks too big or too small from the count. Oh, the, this is just a thing, I, a bag I made myself. I didn't talk about, this is from, that my schlanket is in. Um, I got, this is from Yarn Bling. Yarnbling.co.za. I love how they say ZA. Um, it's from Sally in South Africa. She had a um, sale, and um, the dollar is doing better, I guess you could say, than the South African Rand. So that works in my benefit. Um, Sally has the Wool Diaries podcast. Okie dokie. So we can move on to procurement. Yeah, we have something there exciting to let you know if you are in the Connecticut area. Oh, yeah. There is a new yarn shop in Niantic, Connecticut. It's Twist Yarn Shop. What are the ladies' names? Jen and Lisa. I thought that might be it, but I think they're sisters. They got very excited about hearing about our sister podcast, so I was like, maybe they are. Yeah, they were looking it up. I uh, told you we weren't as fancy as it sounds. If you want fancy, go see Grocery Girls. They are <laughs> mean and knitting expat. Oh, goodness. But, yeah. Yeah, so very exciting. They have a nice um, range. Um, a lot of... What would you call it? Run, no. A range of prices. Yeah, so it's just, you know, they have Plymouth Yarn, which is really great. And then they had um, Shibui, which is a little bit fancier. They mm -hmm. even had, I'll have to go back, I think. Um, they had a basket of local alpaca yarn. So I thought that was fun because they had um, like a natural white and then they had a brown. And I thought, you know, you could dye the white easily. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so it was nice. They had a wide variety and very accessible. You know, just the wide range of price points. So there's something for everybody. Because sometimes you can go to a yarn shop and even it's a very nice yarn shop, but they kind of carry stuff that it's like. I can only afford one skein. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, that's really beautiful yarn, but to make a sweater, it's going to be over $100. So it's just. And you don't always want that. You know, probably no. <laughs> Sorry for that. Stop um, running, please. But what thing they did have is called Packapeds HT. I've never heard of them. So it's nice. It they had a lot. It says uh, the Alpaca Yarn Company, the alpacayarnco.com. Hmm. It doesn't say. It's manufactured in Peru, dyed in the USA. And this color is Clockwork Pumpkin. Very Amy colors. Bah, bah. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but it's. Um, I think it has wool. Here we go. Alpaca. Yeah, it's 20 alpaca. 65 super wash wool and 15 percent nylon 125 grams 125 grams 550 yards you could do a nice shawl with that 25 gram coordinating heel and toe yarn what <gasps> the blue is a different skein of yarn oh, so it's a hundred <laughs> okay <laughs> the blue's not in the yarn look what happens when you read <laughs> what does that mean the more you know how friggin' I guess I'm making socks with this. Ah, that is fancy. And it really was, yeah, I think oh, so, so it's a hundred it's a hundred yards. I mean a hundred grams of the main color then? Yeah. Or is that yeah, a hundred gram hand dyed sock yarn, twenty five gram coordinating heel and toe. You can do but you could even do like the border. Let's see. Or put a stripe if you wanted to do it. This mix that pack. Be cool. This mix pack. I was wondering why it said mix pack on there. It was It was $24. Oh. So that's yeah, really see? not a bad. See what I mean? Where it falls you know, in that range of hand dyed. I'll make socks with that. Price right. points. Neat. Oh, goodness. I thought this was all in the same scheme. I'm like, that's pretty cool oh, to put light color. blue and that's orange. <laughs> so that was, yeah. Look Neat. them up. That's cool. And then. I like this color. They had these. These were on. Yeah. Do what? Not now. Okay, go watch your show. <laughs> we're almost done. Okay. Then how are you and then done? These, in a few minutes. These were on sale. They're um they were on sale or close to? They were on sale. They were? Yeah, I thought the basket said sale. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They weren't. Anyway, that's what I, this is all what I bought. Lame Servinia. They're made in Italy. Uh, it's forever. I'm not sure what that means. If that's the like base, yeah. But it's 7525 wool in polyamide. No. Um, and so it's just this color 72. Yeah, 72. It looks like a party. Yeah. That's what that looks like. like. So coloring. that's fun. That's yeah. That's a lot of fun. Um, so it's like a regia. Then I got some. Oh. oh yeah. Oh, those were in their little box. They had a little three dollar basket, so we got some. I got um, some of these too. But I put one on mom's. Yeah. They're little. They look like little sweaters, but they hold your knitting needles together. Yeah. And then I got some Knitter's Pride Nova Plat no. Platina. Platina. And I got them in US one, two point two five millimeters. So, because I'm gonna try to maybe do tandem um, double point. Yeah. Socks. Oh, because my, I've never done. Yeah, that my socks. I have. I use um two sets double points. I do two socks at a time and just do like 20 rows each because I have stuff in sock syndrome. Yeah. So I just thought I'd try that too. Not never a bad thing to have another pair of sock needles. And especially if you buy yeah. sock yarn. <laughs> so yes. there we go. So I'll start. Is that all you have? No. Oh, but okay. I don't need oh. to talk about my washi tape. That's no. okay. AC Moore's having a sale on washi tape. Yeah. Is it, were they $2? Yeah, dollar ninety nine. Yeah, so that's why. Um, I guess I'll start with my little three dollar bin purchase. Um, I just got some size three needles, um, DPNs, because um, that little butterfly was knit with size three DPNs, but for some reason, hundred <laughs> year Charlotte, a long time ago, I um. And that boy. <laughs> she um, um what's he gonna say? I wanted to try knit socks like way before I even really started knitting. No. 
avidly. Um, I, my first project I want to try was socks, and I didn't know that people were on YouTube with videos how to do it. And but the point is, the I, the sock needles are like nine inches long, or the DPNs are nine inches long. So it seems more appropriate for like a baby sweater than a little toy or even socks because it keeps hitting my lap and so I just needed shorter ones yeah yeah here let me show so I just got more or I also got a pair a set of the knitting needle holders so your work doesn't slip off and then I got a bunch of the sock yarn too what is it Servinia Lane I got this color. I really, really like it. I got so um these are fifty gram balls, so you need two to make a pair. Open them. I knit socks for a friend often. We do a trade, so um I wanted some more options for that, and then I got this little one. It's really cute. It's kind of like candy or something. This one looks like it might have um, you know pattern more than striping. You can see those. So, so then, um, my other one, um, again, this is the December colorway, um, 2016 for the Highland Handmaid's Club. Mm -hmm. This is, um, Falkland, non-superwash, and the Palmer colorway. Mm -hmm. It's really neat, the yellows, mm -hmm. and then it's a pink, a mm -hmm. red-ish, it's kind of a dusky gray-blue. It's really, really soft. So I'm looking forward to spending that. And then um, I've never gotten Tannis Fiber Arts. They had a Boxing Day sale um, in their Etsy store. No wonder everybody buys this. This is the, um, they call it, every base has a different label. So they call it, you know, the purple label and they have an orange label and they have a yellow label. Um, oh, I didn't even see the little stick marker. Um, Tannis Fiber Yarts, they are in Quebec, which I didn't realize. I knew they were in Canada, but I didn't know where they were. So I got um, Tannis Fiber Arts Purple Label, which is, it's. I love this. I've used this, I don't know if it's exactly this base, but this blend of 70% Superwash Merino, 20 cashmere, and 10 nylon. So usually it's like 80, 10, 10, but I've used... Um, a base that had 20% cashmere before and oh it's so soft this is the hummingbird colorway this is their boxing day sale which is the day after christmas and the shipping see check the shipping the shipping shipping that day for that sale from canada was 76 cents so it really makes it more um, accessible instead of seven dollars it was 76 cents I don't know what I'm going to knit with this, but it's got parts that have you know, more teal, more aqua, more pink. It is so soft. Feel this. You're going to like it. Mm, <laughs> I, think, that's really cool. I think that's everything. I... That's enough. Lane Magazine. It's their first edition, Autumn Winter 2016. I, um, Wooly Thistle. Again, in New Hampshire, did a pre-order of this, so I didn't have to pay the international shipping, which is nice. This, I, one thing I really, really love about Ravelry is that you can see all the patterns in a magazine before you buy it. So you know, you know, is it going to be worth it to me to get this? Am I going to, uh, is there only one pattern I want or are there several? That's, that's the way I judge it. Um, but it's not just patterns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can talk about them in a minute. Yeah. Um, this is a beautiful sweater by Hohi Locatelli, who I love. Her patterns are so usually so user friendly, and they fit me very well. Um, yep. Can we talk about that after? Yeah. This is um. See, it's you can either do a dress or shorten it to a sweater. But, there, you know, there's several patterns, but then they um, have interviews. See, there's a beautiful Hopi. <laughs> um, they have a conversation with Stephen West. 
I think they are in Finland because this is about uh, thin sheep. I haven't read it yet. But the pictures are beautiful. It's in a nice heavyweight paper. Um, why will they have an interview, I think, with um, Issager, Helga Issager from Issager Yarns. They have a story about, um, they have recipes for steamy free ways. Roasted nuts with rosemary. Yes, please. Chocolate cake with dried flowers and flaked sea salt. Mm. Do we have to make that? Charlotte's my cooking buddy. Oh, here, Amy might like this ruby Ooh, port with a tonic. I love it. You like port, right? Mm -hmm. They have a travel guide on Lisbon, Ooh, Portugal. Not Lisbon, Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. You go there to go to the... You go to Lisbon, Connecticut for the Super Walmart. <laughs> but it's really neat. So here's a um, cross stitch bracelet this, um, pattern. This and, and you have buttons and... And tools have oh, a little anyway, um, things that you put things up in your walls. Oh, that's it does look like screws, but these are actually safety, safety eyes, eyes. For, built their for the eyes, other butterflies. Eyes for your little um, They do look like screws for your wall, though. But that's, this magazine's beautiful. And this is where you put, these are tools you put it on, and these are and these are eyes you put on your dolls. Yeah, eyes you put on your dolls. Good All right. Job. Oh. Pre-order from Sucre Sucre. Pumpkin spice latte. Pumpkin oh. spice cupcake. I'm okay. I'm okay. Charlie loves playing with my little food stitch markers. Um, 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 um. The pumpkin is my favorite, so that's why I got those. All right. Thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> Hopefully, and, it gets edited and then, correctly. And and did you have, put... have, have birthday? Okay, yeah, have a good day. Good day. Bye. Bye.